It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show. From the Uniden America Studios, this is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the planet, we are Red Eye Radio. Good morning. Thank you for being here. He's Eric Harley. And I'm Gary McNamara. True. I didn't know this was happening today. Mm. From Fox, the IRS whistleblowers who allege the federal investigation into Hunter Biden uh, has been influenced by politics are testifying before the House Ways and Means Committee behind closed doors today. Mm. Gary Shapley, who led the IRS portion of the IRS uh, uh, Hunter Biden probe, and Joseph Ziegler, a 13-year special agent with the IRS Criminal Investigation Division, will sit for a closed-door hearing during the committee's executive Tuesday uh, session at 1030. Now, here's the interesting thing here. Hmm. Now, I'm wondering, I just started, just read this, so right before we went on the air, and so I'm thinking, I'm, I have not come to a conclusion of where this is headed yet, so there are many thoughts going through my head. The okay. whistleblowers are set to discuss information, quote, Protected under Internal Revenue Code, Section 6103, end of quote, according to the committee, meaning the information is related to the confidentiality of tax returns. Hmm. Uh, Shapley and Ziegler have alleged political influence surrounding prosecutorial decisions throughout the Hunter Biden investigation, which began in 2018. Shapley said that decisions at every stage of the probe were made that had the effect of benefiting the subject of the investigation. And Ziegler has said that the, that Hunter Biden should have been charged with a tax felony, not only for tax misdemeanor, uh, a tax misdemeanor charge, and that communications and text messages reviewed uh, by investigators may be a contradiction to what President Biden was saying about not being involved in Hunter's overseas business dealings. This is the other thing here because they they put that in there for a reason. They wanted that out there. Yeah. The Republicans wanted it out that right. the whistleblowers are set to discuss information protected under Internal Revenue Code Section 6103, according to the committee, meaning information that is relating to the confidentiality of tax returns, which means they would be looking because at that point, I don't believe they were looking at any Joe Biden's tax returns. But definitely they're looking at Hunter Biden's tax returns. Right. Now, here's the other point. Shouldn't we be able to figure out already with the money that we know went to Joe Biden, whether he actually reported it or not, or didn't he have to because he put it down as loans? And as you know, there's regulations for when you give out loans also. Yeah, depending on the the amount of the loan, but you had, if there's the flow, especially you know, electronic money for depositing. They, you know, they should have gone the Menen, the uh, Menendez route with gold bars. Would have been so much easier. You know, when you say Menendez, that sh- shows you how old I am. I think of the Menendez brothers. brothers yeah. And I'm like, what's yeah. gold bars? Oh, oh, Senator Menendez. Yeah. Yes. But uh, the, you know, you would want to step out in front of it if there was a Flow of money from any one source on a regular basis, you would want to step out and say, okay, uh, notation. This was repayment of a loan. It could be, in fact, it quite often is, depending on the amount, but if it's a larger amount, a bank will contact you and say, we've noticed the movement of money. And we want to ask you more about it uh but remember when everybody was going crazy about trump's tax returns that's kind of gone away hasn't it (laughs) 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 because if you look at the biden tax returns because my gosh how many loans did he make what's the total amount of the family loans that he doled out Mm -hmm. it was the bank of biden the joe savings and loan (laughs) 
And when you, <laughs> it, it could be more disastrous than the S, SNL scandal. But when you look at that flow of money, I mean, it's going to tell the story. And if he's not reporting it as income, because if, you know, if it's a half a million or if it's whatever it is, it was a pretty large amount from James Biden being written the very day. It was it 200,000? 200, yeah. yeah. That uh, that right. the the money from AmeriCorps landed in James Biden's account. He wrote a check that day. Really, James, you couldn't wait a week. He wrote it that day to Joe right. Biden, and and so you follow that flow of money as we've been saying all along. And I would love to see the next step of all right. Take a look at the um, the the tax forms. We were told, I forget who said it at the White House. Look, there's proof that that was a loan. Well, they asked for the proof, you know, as far as, you know, Comer has never said we have proof of it. In fact, he's saying the opposite. We don't have proof of it. No, they made it clear. And somebody at the White House said, well, there's proof that it was a loan. But they're not getting it. They're not getting that proof. No, the story came out about a week ago, a week and a half ago that... They refuse to provide any evidence that it right. was alone. The exactly. White House. So, right. It, you would want the point being, if you're the White House, you could you could undermine a lot of what's going on right now. If you could prove that those were only loans, if you had all the paperwork that demonstrated, hey, this is a loan, loan to my brother. Yeah, I loan loan money to family members on a regular basis. And here's where it was repaid. Here's where I funded the loan, all of that. Then you might, that would be my first go-to. I want to get out in front of this because I want to shut up the GOP. Right, right. And I can shut them up right now. Yeah, and make them look and, and, and the media will stand behind me yep. on it, even though it does not at all exonerate you. It doesn't that, exonerate that, you. It, it just fulfills the the incorrect narrative that the liberal media is making and so you wish to defend that because right. it, it's still if you're loaning if you're loaning money because the perfect way to hide that you're a part of it is to officially loan money to people mm-hmm. yep and then how they pay you back is how they enrich themselves and the rest of the family uh-huh. because it's it's still illegal to take to do pay for play, not enriching yourself, but enriching your entire family. Right. That's still against the law. If you're taking a bribe, but not taking the money yourself, it's taking the bribe and enriching relatives, which is also against the law. But the best way to hide that would be to officially document giving the loans out. Yeah. Right. And from what we know, They can't find any documentation when the bank examiner asked Hunter Biden for the documentation. They said no. And that was for the what? The five million. Yeah. And so when which was a lot, which was also a loan. So you look at that and and you say, well, my gosh. All right. So now you're again, you're acting sort of in defense or questioning and sort of in defense of Biden. Well, why? Why? Why wouldn't they? I mean, certainly they'd go out of their way to document everything. You know, uh, this just shows that they just did it like any family member would do it. Hey, can you lend me, you know, a huge heaping, steaming pile of money, dad? And then, you know, oh, sure, I'll send that right over in the Corvette. And then you you have the, you know, that back and forth. But ultimately... The reason they don't go out of their ways to, you know, in this case, Biden doesn't go out of his way to cover his own tracks. Because of his arrogance, he's not going to get caught, Jack. He's the vice president or former vice president of the United States, Jack. It's also any investigator will tell you it's another way to evade paying taxes. Mm -hmm. You claim I loan them something. Where's the evidence of it? There is no. If you can't produce that evidence Mm -hmm. that it wasn't a loan, right? And you got that money back, Mm -hmm. you owe the IRS. Yep. 
That's income. That's in, yep. And he hasn't been able to produce it. Didn't produce it. He has I don't know. Uh, he didn't produce it for the uh, James Biden two hundred thousand. Right. They asked him specifically, please provide us with the evidence. They wrote to him. Right. And they said, no, we won't provide you with the right. evidence. Right. So at that particular point, that's where you start saying, OK, because the one thing you would look at immediately is, you know, did the president report any of this? Is the loan on his taxes in any way? And in some right. cases, you have to put loans, you know, on your on your taxes. Well, if it's two hundred thousand dollars coming yeah. back to you in 2018 from your brother. You better. Yeah. When money lands in your account to I'd the have, tune of yeah. two hundred grand, I'd have it documented. Yeah. Absolutely. Any time that I've moved any large amount of of cash from one account to another, or you know, money from one account to another, I've made a notation. I've also made it clear I would go to the bank. Go inside the bank for those under the age of fifty. Are you saying a from, bank is a from your account to your account, or you mean yeah. somebody else's account to your 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 from, account? To somebody from else's account. One of my other accounts, not a and not a transfer. If I was taking uh, in the form of a check from one of my other accounts, I would take it in. This is how careful I want to be. I will take it into the bank and say, "This is from one of my other accounts. I'm transferring it here for this reason because it might be over." Ten thousand uh, dollars. Anything over ten thousand dollars is going to be red flagged, and I want to do that. I wanted to, and I had to do that in the case of a, a job I was doing, a roofing job that I was paying for out of that account, and I went inside to tell them I wanted to volunteer that information and say, "This is why I'm moving this money," and they were like. Okay, no big deal. But I felt like it was a big deal. If it were 200000 a check coming from my brother, yeah, I'd want to sit down with the president of the bank and say, hey, yeah. just and, so we know. And, and I think for me it was when I put down, what I put down, 20% of my house. Mm-hmm. That was a large check. Right. But that was a, that was a, a cashier's check. Right. So they mm-hmm. made it. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. you know, and so they. Yeah, you're getting it from. Right. Bank. I'm getting it from the, and the, taking the it bank. To a title right. company. And right. the only other time was when I when I bought my last car and I paid for that in cash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, and and so. But Which all is I, different because that's money coming out of your account. Right. Right. And, and all I did was write a check for that. I didn't need, mm-hmm. I didn't need to get a cashier's check. Right. But they have the check. I got the car. Yep. <laughs> that's not hard to. Here's the check. Here's right. the car. That's right. You know, the money. And, and it and it went again to an official you know, went to a car. It went to a car dealership. Right, right. So it's like uh, there's no mistake well, that can be. But I'm always concerned in the in the back of my head. Whenever I transfer anything that would be over ten thousand dollars, I'm going, okay, what's going on? What are you doing? Just well, make sure you cover everything. And now you can make notations on a transfer going from one bank account to a separate bank, right? Right. And that's yes. what I was doing. I've done a couple of times, but in the past I did it on a paper check, so I would have that receipt and writing in the memo right. with my signature saying that was the purpose of moving that money. Now for me on treasury bills, it's pretty easy. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with the federal government. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's no need yeah. at that point. You right. really don't need, you're dealing with the treasury department. Right. So right. it's like, I'm buying a treasury bill. All right. right. And <laughs> all right. The treasury bill, the six months is done. You're putting the money back into my account. Mm-hmm. Not too many mistakes can be made there. You're dealing with the Treasury Department, yeah. the people who would probably investigate something if it was going wrong. That's not like a, a an external transfer of money. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, I would be, you start loaning people $200,000. A $200,000 bu- check? Yeah, I'd be like. For my brother? I'd get my brother on the phone and go, well, you, you got to go to my bank with me. We got to show them. I mean, they, we want to. No, that's a great point. You know, I would no, want that to go is, no, way out of my way and say, hey, we're not in business together. This is a loan. I would want to provide, in fact, loan documents to the bank and say, because they're going to ask questions because of their compliance. No, they have that's, rules. You're right. This you're right. gets back to yeah. the um, suspicious activity reports. 
And that's what's come up. How many of those SARS that have come up? 150. <laughs> wow. At least 150. Right. And so. I think they added more a yeah. month, month ago, didn't they? Mm. Uh, I thought they added more. I thought it was like I think it was closer to 200, 170 yeah. that's what something. I, I remember 170, 78 that, that or something like that. Yeah. yeah. But that's a lot. If it were a dozen, it would be a lot. Yeah, I don't think uh, any of us have one. I mean, I may have one that I don't know about, you know, for the movement of money. But again, there's an explanation mm. tied to it. So there shouldn't be a SARS. No, because you probably would have heard from somebody if you had one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, I've never been audited. So, yeah. You that. might have. You might right. have. Somebody may have. Knocked on your door as you were testifying before Congress. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 866-90-RED-EYE. This morning's USDA Farm Report is brought to you by Howes Products. Tested, trusted, guaranteed since 1920. No one knows for sure exactly how the tree edition of decorating an evergreen tree for the holidays got started, but one story is called... The blessing of the fir tree. Agriculture Department history researcher Ann Effland says this goes back to the early 700s in Germany, where pagan druid tribes who believed trees had spirits would decorate oak trees. And uh, when St. Boniface was converting those tribes, he felled an oak tree to prove that it didn't have a spirit in it. And in the process, it knocked over all of the trees in its path except for a small fir tree which survived and the the legend is that he uh, blessed that fir tree as uh, a special symbol of god's blessing because it survived the fall of the oak and from then on then this christmas tree has been associated with christian spirituality and also has flourished into a major farm business this year americans are expected to spend over a billion dollars to buy 20 million real christmas trees gary crawford for the u.s department of agriculture this report brought to you by Cenex Fuels and Loops. We'll be right back with more Red Eye Radio with Eric Harley and Gary McNamara. It's Red Eye Radio. Uh, he is Eric Harley, and uh, I'm Gary McNamara. It's going to be an interesting week. I mean, uh, yeah. both with uh, the, I mean, the Republican debate. A <laughs> little bit of a snore there uh, on, uh, on on the, on news. the CW and News Nation. I, I didn't see it with CW. I just yeah. saw News Nation. I went, yeah. really? Yes. Yeah, so that's a simulcast. I mean, it's is not... News Nation and CW. Are they co- are they same owner? I have no idea. I don't know either. But when I just thought it was News Nation, at least CW has is in most major markets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are, and and so uh, you know that is, at least gives them that exposure. If it was News Nation, I was like, you got to be kidding me! <laughs> Will they get a million? Uh, but um, you know they're not a highly rated network. When I watch them, I mean they're they're not as bad as MSNBC or CNN. I think they I think yeah. they do a I think they do a fair job. I don't watch them much, but when I have, yeah. I, I haven't come away going, eh. Right, yeah, right, yeah. I, I bunch I, of activists. I, I've always so far I've chalked it up to they haven't found their bias yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you but need that's, to find your bias. That's, but that's actually it. I just, as I was saying it, it was like, oh, that's actually it. I like that. It's uh, that they haven't found their bias yet. They're still too young to have a bias, but give them a minute. To democracy, if don't download our app, Red Eye Radio. Eight 
In front of radio, uh, he's Eric Carley, and uh, I'm Gary McNamara. All right, now I just I just saw a headline of an article saying deflation coming next year. Okay, just like yeah, yeah. Okay, we've gone. <laughs> if you there's a 360 degree circle, everything is included in there. Now, well, it's isn't it? because if it were true deflation, and if 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 any analyst or group of analysts believe that true deflation is coming next year. What they're saying is they believe it's going to be a hard recession. Yeah. It's a very hard recession. Because true deflation has really only happened during the great depression. So it would have to be a really deep recession for us to get to true deflation. And that is, you know, price is essentially going way under where they were, uh, you know, uh, starting where inflation was was uh, rising a couple of years ago. So we'd have to go back to 2018, 2019 pricing. I, I want to see that. It's more likely they're misusing the word deflation. It, it could be the case. I mean, we, we've seen a number of items. Uh, that have come down in price, but that's not deflation. True deflation is when your overall grocery bill is going back to where it used to be before this massive spike in inflation. I, I'm assuming they're misusing that word. And that's the problem, I, I think, when you when you make a political promise, you know, that's one thing. And I think people take that with a grain of salt when analysts and so-called experts come out and say, okay, this is what we believe is going to happen in 24. You know, all right. You kind of have to slow down and explain things. What do you mean by deflation? But it would be great. I mean, if we, if we got to that point uh, where prices could go down and I'm going to go full unicorn here without going through a, a massive recession, but you can't have one without the other. No, you just don't go through massive <laughs> deflation. Yeah, it's it just not, not going to happen. It does, no, it you know, mean. it's just not going to happen. And <laughs> it just hit me. That's what Biden will be using if we're in a recession in the summer. Well, log prices are coming way down, way down. So use that unemployment check for all of these goods that have come down in price. It's not going to be good as you now have, I don't know how many analysts. It seems like right now there is a growing consensus, and it's built in the last two to three weeks of analysts saying recession in 24. Yeah. It was just one or two. And we don't make predictions, but my question would be, why are they all saying it? Why do you have such a large group of them saying it? And well, what got me was when I saw the analysis that one uh, percent growth between now and next year at this time. Yeah, that's it. The entire year, one percent growth, mm-hmm. which means odds are you'll have some negative growth quarters in there. They have to be predicting that now. Yeah, when you when you look at it, I mean, I will. It's tough. Again, the economy is so diverse. But when you see things like the other day that uh, uh, was at uh, new home builds or new mortgages, whatever it was, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. at its lowest rate since they started taking records in 2000. Mm-hmm. You know, when you see stuff like that, when you see the 13th straight month of contraction in manufacturing. Yeah. Right. You, you don't get 5.2% growth as you saw in the last quarter normally when you see those kind of stories and if those are correct those statistics are correct you never see that kind of growth with the statistics that new home builds are lowest in 20 years Mm -hmm. you just you just don't yeah and and so i've always wondered i'm like "Mm, they're being so optimistic and then i say to myself did they really skew that gdp so bad that it's just a movement of money. So if you just move money anywhere, <laughs> it right. props up the GDP. Because when you see that, when you see all the when 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 you see number one, 
what's going on with uh, with automobiles and how expensive they are right yeah, now. Right. And so the slowdown of people buying automobiles and 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 houses. Mm-hmm. That's when you look at it and you say, well, if housing is down and projected to be record low numbers and cars are way too expensive for most people to buy right now. The tell you when I was in my dealership, 23% increase from last year. And that's the, the, the dealership, the service department. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. She said, everyone, and everybody's they talking. Hold on to their car. Everybody's talking about, we got to hold on to the car as long as, as possible. Yep. By the way, I did tell them <laughs> nobody knew about what was coming up from Congress. Mm. about, you know, the distraction stuff. Right. Yeah, the, the kill 20- switch. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I told my dealership, I said, well, i got to go to sales and motivate them to sell more cars in 2025. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if, Between if this, now and the end of 25, right? If, if this comes if this comes true. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, my service manager, she told me that there is a fear out there from people that electric cars are going to dominate and they won't be able to you know, have a a gasoline powered vehicle that they feel they can depend on. Right. I thought that was really interesting well, because I didn't know if that was I didn't know if the average person was thinking about that. I know I am. I said it, it, it uh, even at my age. I'm like, when am I going to buy my last gasoline powered car? I I said about a month or or two ago that, uh, and I said it a few times since. You better know somebody who can work on cars, or you better learn how to work on cars. Because that's what it's going to require. If if it if the mandate thing is to hold, then eventually you're just going to have to work on that old car and rebuild it. By the way, they'll outlaw driving an older car eventually as well. Well, though, they would have to. Yeah, there's, there's no way around that. Why? Because I'm evidence that you can get 20 and a half years out of a vehicle, especially in the south. Mm -hmm. Up north with the salt, maybe not. Right. Well, I mean, you had uh, in with big rigs when the engine changes came about and the mandates came about with big rigs. You had a lot of owner operators go out and buy what's called glider kits. So you would have a... Uh, rebuilt engine, older engine, and you would basically put the body of a new truck on it. And that went so far as to the federal mandate against that kind of operation. If you were a company that built glider kits, they had to outlaw that behavior. So eventually, if they want it, you know, I mean, if they're going to be true to their agenda here they're going to have to outlaw older vehicles thing is it's not going to work because that's people, the, would be, people would be you, you're what are you going to do force them to walk they can't well, you, you're not going to be able to afford the car who wants to pay 19 grand to replace a battery i i was asked uh, over thanksgiving vacation so you know is there any good news and i went yeah the left has been so delusional and in control of so much of the government that everything on their agenda the, on their agenda that Trump they have put through will have to stop because we can't afford it. End of story. Yep. Yep. You can't do it. Realism is hit. Yep. If there's any if there's any good news, we're finally to that point. Well, if you want political suicide, keep forcing it more and more and more to the, I mean, you force it to where people can't buy anything but an EV and they can't afford an EV. Imagine that political landscape. Well, you'll never get there for the very reason that politically it would just be death. And nobody wants to step into that. The reason that a Newsom can do that is because he's not worried about it. He's not going to be governor in 2035. Are you kidding me? He's probably not going to be a former president either. <laughs> but he's not going to be affected by it. Who cares? The elitists don't care. 
and he's not going to be around to see the downfall of it. But eventually, they'll have to back away from that mandate. There's no other way. There's no possible way to have the charging infrastructure to mine all of the materials necessary to build all of those cars and the infrastructure in time for just the California mandate. And the grid. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Which I'm assuming you were including in infrastructure. Yeah, infrastructure. Right. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen. Yeah. There's no way. Can't happen. It's. Well, and I can hear. Well, it can't with that kind of negative attitude. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. No what, one has done th- the math. doesn't matter whether my attitude is negative or positive. If it's positive, it's delusional. Well, because there is no, there's no way to make that unicorn. There's no way to just create the unicorn. Well, I've seen a unicorn. There's one in my daughter's bedroom. Has it up on a shelf. <laughs> of course they exist. If you want to walk down the delusional road and wear the blinders, great. That's on you. But the world is waking up when the OEMs look at this and the dealerships are looking at this saying, we can't do this. We've got a ton of bricks on our on our lots. Nobody's buying these cars and nobody wants to buy the used ones because they don't want to have to come up with 19 grand to replace a battery. I have a solution. Why don't we find out what the aliens are flying? It's got to be carbon neutral, right? No, no. Since I, I see Congress is bringing that up again about the, I think the extraterrestrials. Aliens are, I think the aliens are creating the black holes with their pollution. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm no astrophysicist. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going with that. You <laughs> yeah. said creating the black hole. I'm like, uh, oh, with pollution. <laughs> yeah, okay. with their pollution. <laughs> it's clear. And they have been for trillions and trillions of years. Now, we know that in Independence Day, they didn't give a damn about the Earth. No. No. No, they didn't. In fact, they were willing to suck all the natural resources out of the planet, destroy it completely, and move on. Right. You see, that's the kind of clarity that Democrats need to give. Well, even in... The aliens gave... Yeah. They were very, very clear and honest. What is it that you want from us? Mm Mm-hmm. To die. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We want you to die. (laughs) And and you can go back to Star Trek. You know, look at the Vulcans. No emotion. They don't care about humans. They don't care. They have zero emotion, which means they're conservative. Well, they were logical. They were logical. It's all about logic, <laughs> critical thinking, yes. not emotion. 866 red eye Coming up, more with Gary McNamara and Eric Harley. It's Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. Uh, he is Eric Carley, and uh, I'm Gary McNamara. Interesting to see what will come out, uh, number one, of the uh, the IRS agents uh, testifying today. And they'll be testifying about confidential tax information. Now, I believe the Republicans wanted that out. What does that mean? Yeah. Hmm. And how soon will we learn yeah. about it? And if they if they pass the impeachment, uh, if if they pass and it gets through the impeachment inquiry, which I believe they won't have a vote unless they know they have the votes for. Yeah, it. Johnson's not going to bring that to the floor right. if, without the votes already. And uh, seemed like over the weekend he was stating that they had the votes, or he believed he has the votes. Mm. So believing he has the votes as to that's definitely that he has the votes with this Republican conference. Who the heck knows? I'd be very surprised if they didn't have the votes. For this, though, especially with all the information that keeps trickling out day in and day out for yeah. an impeachment yeah. inquiry. Right. Which is it gives you that clout without question with the congressional approval 
to really enforce those subpoenas. Right. And ensure that any court would say, well, it's not an official impeachment inquiry because only McCarthy said it and he's no longer speaker. Mm -hmm. You need a whole House vote in order to do that. Are they concerned about that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Because you still don't need to have an impeachment inquiry to file a subpoena in Congress. No. And get somebody to, to testify. Right. Yeah. Well, it does it help? Be, does it help you fast track it? Probably, and you want that fast track, uh, especially the first half of twenty four. You want that process to move fairly quickly. This is Red Eye Radio on West.